just yeah. Improved. You think Johnson should flip up the infield just to? to uh, I don't think airs. so. I don't think so yet. Oh, I think, goddamn camera. I think you do. Uh, what happened? Katie. I think you do. I think you allow the guys to to try to work out of their issues right now on yeah. their own. I think, I think you. Right I think you allow like these guys have earned the starting spot. I think you give them a chance to get out of their own way or, or trying to get out of this little rut. And then if it doesn't, I mean, you're not you're not starting SEC play yet. You know what I mean? Like this is what this is for. It's just to get to figure out what's going on and then you know get ready for SEC play. So I think you give them a little bit more time. Let them figure some stuff out. Like I said, this thing can ha- this thing can change in, in an instant. You know. You know, it's it's very early, so I think that's that's what you would you would have to do. Um, I know people shouldn't be freaking out already, but that's, no, that's a lot of errors. It is a lot of errors. And then there's uh, some hey, reports listen, by, by, by yeah, that Dandy Don that said that this um, infield situation or what's happening with the defense it has traveled. Like this is something that is common with the Jay Johnson team. Okay, so, so that was he is I don't know the, I don't sacrificing know the offense for defense. I mean, defense for offense. I don't know the history of Jay's teams. Defensively, I don't know how good they have been or how bad they have been or whatever. But, yeah, I mean, if this is something that is an issue going forward, I think that's – but, look, this is – errors doesn't matter about competition. It doesn't matter who you're playing. You still have to fuel the ball. So you're going to be able to – every game is another game for them to get better. And where it's not like, you're like, oh, they're playing Maine. They're not good. Like, no, no, Maine's going to hit ground balls. They're going to hit fly balls, and they're going to put balls in play, and you got to make the play, it's, right? It's routine plays, too. Right, and so you, have, you still have four games coming up with McNeese tonight and you have the three game series this weekend that you have the ability to, to, to evaluate these guys. And then at that point you say, okay, Hey, I'm going to put a guy who's going to be able to catch the baseball and make the play. I'll put them in and sacrifice maybe a little bit of offense. I think that's probably the move to do. I don't think you press the panic button just yet. Do you think a lineup change, like just moving the infield psychologically would mess up the team too? Start no, pressing listen, a little listen. more. In 2009, we had, I mean, Jim, we were on that team, right? We had a, we are playing Tennessee. And at that time, Tennessee sucked. They were the worst team in the league. And we had not lost a series all year. And we were playing Tennessee at home. And we made six errors in one game. Oh, my God. And, yeah, I mean, errors not happening. It wasn't just that either. There was another point to it that was huge. At that point of the season, which we were pretty well into the schedule. We had four games, four series we left in the SEC. We hadn't turned it. Not one a single double. six four three double play on the yeah. game. Yeah, not one. Not it's nearly one. impossible. Yeah, and we were good. We were the number one team, in the top five team in the country. And so then we had this game, and we make six errors, and we lose the series to Tennessee. This is a Sunday game. We lose it now. Everybody made. Everybody was available to make errors. We had second baseman, shortstop. I made error in right field. Like we, everybody was making errors. Yeah, it wasn't just in the middle. It wasn't just, just in the, the middle of the infield. Area. Everybody was doing it. That next day, Coach that brings us day. that off day. Coach brings us into the office, and I'm playing right field at the time. Jay mm-hmm. Mitch is playing left at the time, right? No, you're no, playing, I was playing right. You're yeah. playing right. I was playing. No, 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 I was playing right. I pretty much played right. Like I thought, I was. I thought you got moved to right. I thought you were playing left, and you got moved right. to right because I got moved. Where was I playing? I was playing. Cause I wasn't playing center yet. Anyway. Left. Mike, you even play on the team? Yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe you're right. I think you were playing left. I, I was playing right. right. Leon was in center. Yeah, I think you're right. And so at this point, coach comes in and says, all right, this is what we're going to do. Well, first off, there was – he had individual meetings with a number of guys, and there was a team meeting that, you know, nobody knew what was really going on, but there was a team meeting later in the day. So this is what happened. Yeah, so he brings us in there with individual. He, so he, he knew what he was doing before. He, ended, he met with – because these two guys that he had to meet with specifically, or three guys, two of them were starters, and they had – Big impacts on the team. Four, really? Yeah, four, really. DJ LeMayhew, Leon Landry, Ryan Schimpf, and Austin Nola. Austin Nola was not starting. Austin Nola was the one out of those four guys that was not starting yet. He was on the bench. He was infielder. The best shortstop on our team. Didn't make any errors. So coach said, hey, I think that this is going to solidify. Now, now Leon was struggling a little bit, and he was not hitting the ball as well. Because defense was not his problem. It was just, he wasn't, there's a lot of things that were just snowballing for him. So coach said, Leon, you are benched, basically. Like, in the nicest way possible, he said, you are, you're going to go bench. Tells me I'm going to center. Moves Jared from left to right. Moves Ryan Schimpf, who played a little bit of first and a little bit of second, from there to left field. He's never really played the outfield. Right, never really played the outfield. He also says, and this is the big move was, DJ, 
the number are, one shortstop. The number one in. shortstop coming in. You are an All American. You're going to be a first, the second, or first or second rounder in the draft. I'm going to take you off of shortstop and put you at second because I think by playing Austin Nola, it has nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with us not being able to, as a whole defense, playing well. I'm going to put Austin at short. And I'll put you at second. And DJ was not happy. He was not because he would. That's what he came there for. He was. This is his draft year. Yeah. He was an All American. All of this stuff. He put Austin Nola. The minute he made that move, our defense went from shaky to nails. Austin Nola made two errors the entire year at shortstop, and we turned all these double plays. And DJ ended up making it to the big leagues as a second baseman. Yeah. So he makes a move to help our defense sacrifice. He didn't care about Austin getting hits. All he cared about was making sure that we solidified the middle infield. And we went on this run in Omaha to Omaha that obviously, like, we were already good. But this just made us even better. And it was a, it was a huge move, and people, like, were, were questioning it. But Austin was nailed. And Austin actually came up with some big hits. He did. He had a game-winning hit he against did. Baylor in the regional. We're losing. He had a big you know, Austin had some really big hits yeah. in here. You know, Austin just, I'm not trying to be funny at all, but, like, it because he was so young and in the situation that he came into, it almost felt like... All of his hits were the big hits. Like you, yeah, like it, it was like when he came up in big hit situation, you're like, geez, this kid keeps just, just right. he gets it done. Like right. he just keeps getting. And it you done. knew like he made every single play at shortstop. Like that was the difference. It solidified it. We knew that going into the postseason, you had to make those plays. You couldn't give up extra runs, extra outs. <clears throat> so I was a catcher. Now he's a catcher. He's a great <laughs> catcher. But he was the different. I'm not saying you need to make that move yet. This didn't happen until four weeks left into the SEC. Three, three or four weeks left into the SEC. So you had time. He had he seen it, and it wasn't like we were playing bad. It was just, yeah. hey, this is going to take us to the next level. And I think right now you allow these guys to figure it out. You allow these guys to get through their lumps. And if it continues to happen, at least through the weekend, then maybe you reevaluate it and you say, okay, maybe I need to make a little bit of a change. Yeah. You know, but you know, I think offensively they're going to be fine. You just you, defense. I mean, they say pitching and defense wins baseball games. Like, yeah, offense, you need to score runs. But if you can't stop a team from scoring, then, you know, that's, it makes it a little bit more difficult play. for you. Can't play pitch and catch. Tough. No. Yeah. Very tough. Very, 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 very tough. Um, I got a little distracted. So, can 